Hey, we are recording. Welcome back to another episode of these crazy bastards just keep eating meat and can't shut up about it. My name is Tom. Thank you for uh, joining the show. We appreciate you being here. We just thought it was all too appropriate to do a, a video on coronavirus. So here we are with all our various preparations for surviving the coronavirus apocalypse. <laughs> And uh, let's get started. Maybe Emily would like to kick us off and tell us how coronavirus has changed her life and what she thinks is going to happen. Take it away, Em. I'm going to be able to wipe my butt. <laughs> yeah. We're yes, good. For a little while. And I made my mask out of paper towels and office clips. Ooh, sexy. Mm -hmm. And I am... I am isolated in rural Missouri. I'm golden. You look like you're in a safe house. I'm in LA. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. What did you say, Tom? I said I'm in LA. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. I grew up breathing <laughs> smog. I'm surrounded by people. And, you know, contagions are going to fly through this community like there's not tomorrow. So. Well, I'm not far behind being in Sydney. Yeah. Are you in Sydney or are you out in the desert somewhere? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> he is he looks like King T P. Love the baklava. <laughs> yes, Chef Baklava. We should call him that for a while. Chef Baklava, I love it. Baklava. Chef baklava. Baklava. Yes. Baklava. <laughs> baklava. <laughs> How about you, Justin? What's going on behind the mask? Yeah, so <laughs> I am I am worshiping Corona Chan nightly. You know, I look up pictures of Corona Chan and I worship her. Um, that seems to keep me safe from the virus. Um, yeah, so everyone, yeah, worship Corona Chan. She will, with her bat wings and her Corona bottles, she will save you as long as you keep giving her bats and Corona. <laughs> Love it. And we're and worshiping her nightly. Yes. Uh, other than that, behavioral changes. So um, I've started washing my balls um, <laughs> three, <laughs> three, three hot water, five, right? With hot water, so you, three to five times a day now. <laughs> so you don't lick them like the cat anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Corona Chan doesn't like that. I, 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 <laughs> this is all the wisdom from Corona Chan. Uh, the rituals. Yeah, told me, yeah, the rituals that will keep me safe from coronavirus. Wash them balls three to five times a day. Yeah, if you don't have balls, I don't know. You have to walk. You have to worship Corona Chan. See what she needs you to do. That was the divine message that I got from our new goddess, Corona Chan. We're gonna have to subtitle this whole video. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah, say. I, I was just gonna, yeah. I was just gonna <laughs> say, uh, people, it's not your audio; it's Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin. <laughs> oh, oh what is that? Is Corona that her? Chan. Corona Chan, <laughs> love it. God. All right. Well, for the sake of keeping an audience, all we demask. We'll take the risk of the coronavirus. Hey. Oh! I didn't get to introduce myself. Oh, you go ahead. Do with you, take your mask off. I, 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 I'm, I'm the Genghis Kong of Corona, okay? That's my, <laughs> you, go. you look like a my mummy. TP. Okay, maybe a mummy. There you go. I got my TP ready and my painter's mask. I'm being socially acceptable. All right, that's good. What about you, Joe? What about me? <laughs> are, you, no. are you ready Back for the over. coronavirus? Re mate, I've got all the sanitizer that I need. I'm ready for it. No problem. I, you know what? I sanitize my hands that much that my skin started to dry out. Oh, shit. Does that mean I have to start using soap? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of moisturizer. You know, I need to take this off. Yeah, me too. Oh, Tom, you're muted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's lost. <laughs> I was going to say, be glad you don't have hands as big as mine because Oof. you can go to every store and never find rubber gloves that fit. You said I have to, the only place I get it was with this one hydroponic shop. This guy, a guy I know named Tommy would get them for me. 
because the regular rubber wow. gloves, I put them on and they just split open. Oh I my god! Wondered how uh, Damn, John Justin Baker could, <laughs> could could operate on people. They must special order gloves for that guy too, because his hands are freaking ginormous. Justin's got Justin. a special collar on. Oh, Justin yeah, looks like yeah. he's about to audition for Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, Mad Max. There you go. Tight. It was Corona Mad Chan's Max. orders. That's there all time. Corona Chan. I must obey in order to uh, stay safe from the coronavirus. <laughs> I'm going to sanitize you guys real quick. So you guys don't give me your... Oh, beautiful. That's right. Your... Sanitize. <laughs> <laughs> We're all don't, clean don't, now. Don't right. forget my balls. My de balls. Oh, no. No. Do it yourself, you sir. If you don't yourself. sanitize the balls, it's not man time. French should have some limits. Uh, I'm just saying. For some some nether regions, I I shall not go. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Emily, what what exactly have you changed in your life to stay ahead of the virus? Well, I'm prepared, but it's not necessarily anything that I would have done differently. Um, I just got a full order from my local <laughs> farmer and my camper freezer is packed. Um, it is full of local beef and fat. I got 25 pounds of beef fat and uh, probably 20 pounds of beef and uh i'm golden i'm good to go uh got toilet paper <laughs> yeah. uh honestly i mean so far in rural missouri uh not much has changed uh it's just kind of that overlying fear of what's to come um but we haven't had any complete panic or chaos yet here so, so, I mean, what, what are your personal feelings? You think that people on a carnivore diet have a better chance of a better outcome? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like if, even if I do get it, um, it, it'll probably, you know, take me out for a couple of days. Um, maybe have a cough for a little while, but, uh, it's nothing that I, I can't fight back from. Um, <clears throat> I, my son is in the public school district, so the chances of us getting it are great. Mm -hmm. um, is school still in for you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, well, no, I'm sorry. They're on spring break, and so they oh. haven't made the call yet for oh. if they're going to extend mm -hmm. spring break. But th he's on spring break this week. Interesting. All right. So. Um, Zumbo, what do you think? What, have you changed anything and, and do you think carnivores are more likely, less likely, or has no effect at all changing your diet? Look, I think personally, there is a, a chance we could get it, but I also believe that we will, we will recover much quicker from it as well. That's just my feeling. Um, we just seem to be a lot healthier than, than, than people that, you know, eat a standard diet. As far as personal practices, look, I'm always washing my hands due to you know, being a chef, always got to have clean hands, uh, sanitizing my hands. Uh, I'm no longer shaking anyone's hand. I don't want to get too close to people. Yeah. Well, not even just, just a wave. Um, <laughs> no, that's know, stay I, away from me. Stay away. Get yeah. away from me. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, you know, I don't get too close to people. I'm just, yeah, I'm just really, really a little, little bit careful. I mean, being in the, in the food industry, you know, we have to be very careful that we don't pass it on to some, a, a customer that comes in and they're elderly and then they get sick and then, you know, God knows what happens to them. So Do, I don't, um, and I don't catch any public transport either. What well, was the last time you were sick? Last year, last year I got influenza. Oh, that's right. You mentioned influenza. Yeah, yeah. So I actually caught that from my wife, and that really hammered me. I knew it. Your wife. Damn. Yeah. But I haven't haven't been sick since. Uh, it's been going really well. And that's it. I got the flu a week ago. 
Um, and the it's the same flu. It was from work because everybody at work got it. And everybody else has been um, just basically sick for weeks. And I was out for two days. Did so, you know whether you actually got the flu or it was? No, I, no, I just, it, it was the same symptoms I had. Um, and so I just assumed it was, I didn't go to the doctor and get tested. Did you have a fever? Uh, I had low grade fever and I had body aches. Like okay, not, right. not yeah. like, not like the meat body aches, but like the, um, and then it was all in my sinuses and stuff. The, um, I heard some uh, specialists saying that the regular flu this year was quite bad. And my uh, good friend, Tony, he was telling me he got the flu and he, it was literally the worst flu he'd ever gotten in his entire life. I mean, he was felt really bad for, I think he was sick for at least a week or in more or less still kind of sick for another week. It's rough. So uh, how about you, Justin? What, have you been sick lately? What do you think? What's your deal? What do you think, uh, Carnivore? Are you just going to party your brains out and let it blow <laughs> by? What, it's the rave city from here on out. What you going to stay away from girlfriends for a little while, too? No. <laughs> What's well, the deal? Well, the only woman for me is Corona Chan. She's there the you go. woman that I need. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she, she's all I need, baby. She's all I need. Um, so a few changes. So, uh, one thing is, is that after the gym, like I'm taking like two showers a day, especially if I hit the gym, I come home and take a shower. Um, I know that's against your religion, Raymond. I apologize, but <laughs> I'm breaking the nasal protocol. I yeah. still yeah. take showers. <laughs> <laughs> Just no uh, soap. Yep. <laughs> no soap. And, uh, yeah. So now like, I shower after the gym now. Like, I feel like I have to, like, germs or whatever now. Um, I got in a fight with a butcher, well, two days ago. Yeah. So I go to, you know, X Mart or whatever, and they have a sale on ribeyes. And I was like, oh, bomb, you know, I'm going to go grab, like, a bunch of them. So I go up to the butcher counter, and I'm like, hey, can I get 20 ribeyes? And he starts yelling at me. And he's like, you have to place an order for that many ribeyes. I don't have time to stop what I'm doing to get you your ribeyes. <laughs> They'll be ready in 30 minutes. And I was like, I guess I'll be back in 30 minutes. Like it was really confusing that he didn't say no, but he was also very angry about it. Wow. So, yeah, it was really funny. It was kind of interesting, but I just kept my cool, you know, had that zero carbs in. So it was totally <laughs> cool. Went out, I think I chatted with you guys and like went to the Goodwill and I was upset. Okay, this is the thing that upset me more is that I went to Goodwill. I thought it was a Goodwill, but no, it was Goodwill Bookstore. But on the outside, <laughs> it just said Goodwill. So I went and complained to them about their sign not saying bookstore. I didn't Just, know it was a good little bookstore. Okay. Me neither. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, if they ever see this video, yeah, update your sign. Don't be tricking people like that. Um, <laughs> Those evil bastards. To them. It's the goodwill. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I came back and, like, he had my ribeyes ready. And then today I got in a fight <laughs> at another grocery store because, I don't know, I woke up at 6 a.m. I went to the Wally Mart last night and like there was nothing but I did get cat food for my cats don't forget the four-legged animals you got to stock up for your pets too people forget that but mm -hmm. yeah you should really do it um so I was stocking up for my pets and then um I was like damn there's like no meat like it was empty I've never seen the Wally Mart like that empty before mm -hmm. so then I went to bed I woke up at like 6 a.m and was like just had this feeling like you know what I better just go out and grab stuff so I went to X Mart, a different X Mart, and I uh, went and they had ribeyes. They had like a, another sale on ribeyes. So I went and just started grabbing packages because it didn't say like a limit or anything. And this dude walks by me. He's dressed normally. And he's like, there's a limit on those. And I was like, um, okay, like, what's the limit? Can you ask? He said, I'm the store manager and I'm saying that you can only have two packages. And like, okay. he literally, he literally mad dogged me until I put back until I had two in my cart. And oh then my like, gosh. And then I started grabbing like a bunch of ground beef instead. And he just was like, kept like mad dogging me. 
and like giving what? me the stink eye the whole time. Wow. I, yeah. I would have walked he, away and came back when he left. You know, you know, you, sh- you know, you should do Justin. You should actually go shopping next time and wear that mask of yours. That way, he'll leave you alone. <laughs> there you right. go. That's yeah. right. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's it. that's it. That would be good. See if he mess with you then. Yeah, when you walk so you, around so, with bikes, people seem to leave you alone. Yeah. So, so you yeah. sounds like you've stocked up for quite a quite a while now. Yeah, I've got the freezer full of ground beef and ribeyes right now. And plus, it yep. was on sale. And so here's the thing. I'm not worried about not being able to find meat. I'm just worried about it not being on sale and having the place like pay full price or pay over full price. That's my bigger concern, you know, yep. uh, supply and demand, that kind of thing. And then I have my big carnivore theory when it comes to it. But um, I think we'll pass it on to Raymond. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Ray. Let's hear it. Well, um, as far as me, uh, prep-wise, pretty... So today I went to Costco, and believe it or not, there was parking spot. I was shocked. Uh, so yesterday, though, when we went, it was literally... We had to park super far away. When we got into the store, there was a line all the way to the back of the store. That was just like... It wasn't like the, the, the pictures you had, Tom, where it was outside... It wasn't quite that bad and there was no carts available. So we, we walked out and we're like, no, forget it. So I decided to do, oh, I'm sorry, that, that was a, yesterday, that was Friday. So today though, I went in, got, there was no ribeye, so I was kind of pissed. Uh, there was, I'll take that back, there was prime ribeye, but that was like $16.99 a pound. So apparently they jacked that price and I was like, yeah, I'm not buying that. Luckily enough, there was the poor man's ribeye, three ninety nine a pound for you know uh, a, a chuck eyed ro- a chuck eyed roast. So I bought a few of those just to tidy me up until I can get the real thing. I never see those at the store. Every once in a while, I'll see the cut chuck eyes at at one of the supermarkets, but it's rare. Yeah. Well, they 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 had them, and I bought three packs of those, about fifteen pounds of it. So that should last me that week. Hopefully I'll be able to find ribeyes from there. My wife won't touch it. She just, she's like too tough. Gosh, she's spoiled. But <laughs> apparently she, lo- she loves the ribeyes. So I do too. So I can't say much. Uh, so I stocked up with that, stocked up with, uh, with some other, you know, um, uh, we have contractors there. So my wife insisted that I get them some food because we're trying to get it for our roof done. And of course, that's her excuse to get off carnivore for a little while. So she's eating their junk. Um, yeah. But on the, on the plus side, I saw patties, grass-fed patties at $3 a pound. Wow. It was already pressed and everything. I was like, wow, grass-fed. Wow. And it's like, uh, it's like Costco, you know, Kirkland. So it seemed like good quality. Uh, so I can't wait to try that because uh, that's something I can pop into the to the air fryer and just start doing it. So the other thing that I'm doing that I wasn't expecting. So I worked out six days this week. Wow. Which, uh, yeah, uh, I, w- I was doing it kind of because uh, next week I thought I was going to go to the convention, the keto convention, but I'm not. So uh, they canceled it. But uh, anyway, so I was trying to make, make my workout up. Uh, you know, the best part of it since uh, Lion Diet, which I started in March, I feel no soreness. I feel very, very good. I mean, incredibly good. I've been doing 100 push-ups a day, still doing my karate and jujitsu. Um, I did that uh, three times uh, this week on top of the working out, the, the, when I say workout, my uh, Orange Theory workout. So, you know, uh, I feel at my best, which I guess is good if you're trying to prevent the corona, I think. Yeah. So I am washing my hands with soap just to let you guys know that I am diligent, I, I but I, I still won't wash my body with soap or hair with shampoo. So not unless uh, some, somehow we go into a lockdown and they start forcing me to do that. In deodorant, case. no deodorant still, right? No deodorant still. That's yes, right. We've, that's co- right. we've come oh. to affectionately call this the Nason protocol. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> But I mean, that has nothing to do, deodorant and washing your hair has nothing to do with spreading coronavirus. 
That's you what know? I feel. That's so what I, know of. I can't see that they would mandate that ever. Yeah. I no, don't I see mean, people having hairnets, you know, going around in public. If, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you don't use the deodorant <laughs> for long enough, nobody will get close enough to you to contaminate you. So <laughs> they wouldn't but be able to tell anyways. He doesn't That's smell. right. I don't smell. And remember, I do jujitsu with other guys. Okay. So if they, if they thought I'd smell bad, they would let me know very quickly. And the best test was his son. His son. That's right. Yeah. Smelled his armpit. That? Underarm. Yeah, that's right. He smelled his armpit. And he I was like, he, he's like, it just smells like you, dad. That's right. Like, he didn't think <laughs> it was gross. Yeah. How, how do we know the kid's nose just isn't damaged from years of armpit sniffing? <laughs> hey, there you go. That's <laughs> it. The torture <laughs> smell. Kids, kids will always tell the truth. Kids will always yeah. tell the truth. Will they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. they'll throw you under the bus oh, yeah. in a heartbeat. They'll throw you under the bus every time. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Justin, did you want to expound on your theory? Yeah, sure. So I kind of have this crazy theory. I think it's my theory. I'm going to claim it. Mm -hmm. Claim it. So, so we're no all Frank like Tafana. Who <laughs> <laughs> claim it? I'm not wearing. I'm not wearing enough makeup. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so i kind of have this thing so you know we're all like connected to the earth and like the universe and everything and we kind of understand like cycles and i think our cells naturally kind of respond to things before we intellectually understand what's going on and the timeline i just find very interesting this huge uptick in keto and carnivore and then boom, like this coronavirus hits. And I kind of feel like if you look at the natural order or the earth or whatever, there's always a problem, but then like a, a remedy at the same time. Like they usually are, are like co-occurring. You know what I mean? Not to say that we find the remedy at the same time, but um, usually the, the two, there's like a split off there seems. And it seems to be that the keto and carnivore community um, you know, we're kind of built to withstand the coronavirus. And I just kind of find that interesting. Um, and, and keto and carnivore is like exploding even more, I think, since, you know, the virus has gone up. And, you know, you don't see the Beyond Meat burgers out. They were still there at the Wally Mart last night. Um, yeah, but, one of the guys, yeah. right. the guys I talk to at Sam's Club all the time, He's like, yeah, man, everything was sold out, but those veggie burgers were sitting there all lonely on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what Justin is saying is we are the chosen ones. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Does that mean Don't we have to around, around in the desert now? <laughs> <laughs> we are the chosen, uh, uh, as long as we worship the Corona, um, what do you call corona it? Chan. Corona, corona Chan. chan. Yeah, a corona Chan. <laughs> well, Emily... To tell you the truth, how would you have been during this time in your prior in your prior uh, sad days? How um, would you have reacted? Well, I was already so mentally ill that life, um, regular life, was stressful and um, already so just so overwhelming on a daily basis that this would probably have made me go even more into isolation, not necessarily for fear of being contaminated, but more for just like, I, I just can't deal with this. Like I, I just cannot deal with this. Shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just shut down. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I would keep eating sugar. I would be eating sugar and my, my jar of peanut butter next to my nightstand <laughs> and my batches of, uh, you know, raw cookie dough. Um, and I would just be vegging out on, on Netflix and, and eating sugar. That's exactly how I would handle it. Mm. Um, and I, I honestly, it, it's really hard for me to think about that because it's so far removed from me, but it, it's a stark difference contrast to now I'm just like bring it like come on corona like right, let's go right. you know it's crazy that Same. like I'm not going out like licking door handles and shit, <laughs> right, 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 right. you know but I am not worried about it for me or for my son you know I feel that I've prepared him to 
have the right nutrition that he does he's not chock full of sugar um that you know we're we're going to be all right it sucks for society as a whole and the older you know elderly people that are still sitting there eating sugar right um but I, as far as for me and mine i feel safe i feel like we're good i totally agree yeah i like to tell a story that um before I went carnivore, I used to, when I did any like strenuous uh, cardio, I would run out of air all the time. Like I could, my lungs couldn't keep up. And then all of a sudden, you know, I changed my diet and um, I, I did, that doesn't happen anymore, which, which just blew my mind. Cause even when I was a little kid, I remember just, you know, trying to run around and um, just, you know, chase, running around with your friends, you know, playing kick the can or tag or whatever, or, you know, little league or whatever. I would just completely uh, start sucking wind and just couldn't. And then as an adult, you think that stuff's just going to get worse, you know, and uh, I don't. And of course, you know, and with this, this flu in particular, it seems to involve the lungs. And then like we've all noticed, we get sick far less frequently you know, in my case, you know, cross my fingers, I haven't been sick in over two years. Now, amazing. I think in theory, we're supposed to all eventually get exposed to this coronavirus and some people are just going to get sicker than others, you know, over, I guess the worst of it's supposed to be about a two year span. Uh, uh, we can see you now. Yeah. Go you're, ahead. You're moving. All right. Shit. Yeah. It says my internet's unstable damn it so um you know a, a two-year span where this epidemic is supposed to be the uh, you know bad and then it's probably a total of five years before everybody's exposed you know so this is kind of be a bit more of a marathon than anything so um did you guys want me to, i was wanted to show a couple of pictures real quick just yeah for nostalgia yeah. so let me open this up here and, you know, uh, and that's a good point, Tom, because that it's not like it's too late to start eating better. Right. You know, that's and right. You can, can you can now. still protect yourself against this by now removing sugar from your diet. And the best way to do that, the easiest way to do that is carnivore, because then you're not like having these incessant, you know, cravings. Yeah, and uh, uh, later on this video, I'm going to show some studies because, you know, as much as Raymond is afraid to uh, all over science. over science's brain, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I've, I mentioned before when we talked about body odor that, uh, you know, that's actually caused by uh, a staphylococcus that grows on our skin. And it seems like carnivores, once they get adjusted to the diet, have less body odor. We obviously, we seem to get less cavities because we're not eating sugar, and that's uh, related to streptococcus, and then we move on to candida, and on and on and on. So I just think, you know, my pre basic premise is that um, we are uh, battling fewer uh, colonies of bacteria and viruses in our bodies because they're not happily living in a sugar-filled mouth or sugar-filled body or whatever. But uh, let me just share some pictures real quick of the empty aisles of the store. Let me see. You guys should be able to see it right about now. Are you guys still there? Can you yeah, see it? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. I see it now. That's so, crazy. Uh, let me rearrange things a little bit. Uh, wow. So this is the, the toilet paper paper towels and um uh kleenex now today i went back to this club store i uh was i got in line they opened late they let 150 people in at a time and if you wanted paper towels toilet paper or bottled water you got you followed people who directed you through the store down this winding path through you know around everything and wow. they put one of each in your cart and when you went through this line and that's, that was it. And, uh, I think they probably had, 
you know, like 300 units or so, but it was right there in that back corner where they loaded, you know, you walk by and there's a pallet. So this is a meat, one of the meat counters. Wow. You can see it's wow. just bare. This is the other day. Fortunately, there's plenty of alcohol in the back there. So, you know, <laughs> I'm surprised actually. I'm surprised I wouldn't have first to go. Well, here's the other thing is they have, this is Sam's Club and they have a scan and go app. So you can scan your items and pay for it. And then just hold your phone up and they scan that and you walk out the door, but you can't buy alcohol with that. So uh, <laughs> anybody who did want to wait in line didn't buy booze. Uh, 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 well, I guess they just weren't that much of an alcoholic. Yeah. That's right. Was, this was the meat, like the bacon and the hot dogs and stuff like that. Wow. Oop, skipped again. Sorry. Wow. This is the wa bottled water. That's crazy. And then more, more. This is like the prepared meats and stuff like that. This is the line I was standing in this morning to get in in the rain. I've been there. This is my sixth trip, I think, uh, just trying to get toilet paper. And uh, so when I got there, they were like, okay, go get in line. We're going to open at 10. So I got there. Well, I was out there. I was standing there, not moving for a couple hours at least. So um, that's what it took. But everybody was cool. We, everybody was friendly. Oh, um, didn't get the picture. I was going to show. I had a picture. I thought, oh, that's behind me. Those are the people behind me in line. So they go all the way back and you could kind of see that guy standing on the curb with a hoodie. If you look right behind him, you could see the people curving back around uh, the side of the building. Holy crap. Wow. So, and that wow. was, that was, I took that picture probably an hour before they let us in. And that's Southern California, that's right? Southern, yeah. You can yeah. tell by the rain clouds. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving people a point of reference. I know. That's just, crazy. I'm teasing you. So, oh, no. anyways, uh, let's see here. This is, uh, I'm going to run through these studies real quick just to let people know. Now, uh, Sean Baker did a video, and uh, I've got a screenshot of it. It's one about Joe Rogan he did last week, and he talked about this. So, the important role of these things like taurine, creatine, carnosine, arnosine, and 4 hydroxyproline in human nutrition. And essentially, these are all things that we get from eating meat that keep us healthier. So he made a pretty compelling case in that video. And this is one of the studies. It's, it's called The Important Roles of Dietary Taurine, Creatine, Car Carnosine, Arsene, and uh, for uh, Hydroxyproline in Human Health and Nutrition. And I will put the links to these in the show notes for, for all us nerds who want to want to read up on this and you know discuss it with other people. And this one is called the management of virulent influenza virus infection by oral uh, formulation of non-hydrolyzed uh, carnosine and isopeptide of carnosine attenuating um, prion inflammatory cytokine induced nitric oxide production. So anyway, that's like a whole other language. Yeah. So and basically what this is saying is that you know, by eating um, the carnosine rich foods that uh, it, it actually attenuated or reduced the virus load. So that's what the study's about. I'm sorry, uh, if I, uh, did Raymond leave? <laughs> uh, oh, he's still there, okay. And this one's uh, carnosine uh, markedly uh, ameliorates H2, H9N2 swine flu in, influenza. So. Obviously, this is specific to the swine flu, but again, we're seeing substances in meat uh, helping us uh, fight off uh, uh, influenza. And then this one's on L -car carnosine. And this one, uh, carnosine, uh, exhibits uh, significant antiviral activity against dengue and Zika. And uh, of course, we don't deal with dengue and Zika a lot here in the United States, uh, maybe Zika occasionally, but. It's certainly been in the news a lot lately. So it's just good to know that there's, uh, you know, it's keeping down those other viruses. Perhaps they uh, will um, help. Now, this was the episode where uh, Sean Baker was discussing it. It's called Joe Rogan looking sexy on carnivore and red meat. So if you want to hear an actual doctor talk about this instead of me, 
just go on over to YouTube, find uh, Sean Baker, and uh, find this video from like a week ago, and you could hear an actual doctor talk about it instead of just me. But uh, I uh, I wanted to thank <laughs> Justin for volunteering this for the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I actually took the time to draw the thumbnail behind me that I that I'm kind of in love with. I can't believe I actually did that. But uh, I wanted to thank Justin for throwing it out because I'm always looking for yeah. a catchy thumbnail. So, and I just wanted, this is back to that body odor. Here's another article about, you know, uh, one of the causes of body odor is actually the um, Staphylococcus uh, hominis. So, you know, you imagine, well, if we're, if our odor is less, maybe that's a sign that we have less uh, staph on our skin, which is a good thing because nobody wants to get a staph infection when it runs amok. And here we yeah. go, streptococcus, you know, which actually causes most of the cavities. So we know there's a strong association. I don't think too many people doubt the fact that when you cut back sugar, you get fewer cavities, right? And streptococcus um, is what typically causes those cavities. And of course, we've all heard of strep throat and there are various forms of streptococcus and it can show up at different, different parts of the body. But by not eating sugar, the, the streptococcus in your mouth goes down. And when I say sugar, I mean carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Now this is a trying photo <laughs> that we took earlier today. I figure everybody needs to see it one more time. <laughs> And more, uh, the other thing too is streptococcus and candida um, in different places in the body um, can, they actually work together to break down starches in order to fuel themselves. So here's another study about that. Again, I'll put the links in the show note with the title. See, host vaginal uh, mucosa or whatever that was. That's why, you know, the ball washing three to five times a day. <laughs> Turn that out there again. Oh, your balls are like vaginas? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be like, that'd be like shiny, shiny disco balls by the end of it. <laughs> shiny disco. Yeah, why don't you just have them chromed? And then <laughs> 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 mm, natural yeast and problematic. Yeah. So again, yeast, digest sugar. Um, you know, and people get it on their tongue. They give it in, get it in their private areas and, of course, internally. So. Anyways, that's my slideshow, kids. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, Raymond's head didn't explode. Nope, it's intact. <laughs> Ray Raymond's always costing me on getting you too sciency. So yes, he puts a leash on me. You want to make sure to make it fun. Yeah, <laughs> not too science. Always fun. <laughs> we can do both. That's right. We can we do, should both. do both. I have my oh. nerd, my nerd contingent out there. So there, that's true. That's true. You got to satisfy them somehow. By the way, I, I got to blame Justin for getting me hooked on this mountain water stuff. <laughs> Holy crap. It's water and it tastes so good. It's like. And I'll bet it's expensive. Well, Glass this big bottle, big bottle was like two something, you know, but it's like, it's really good water. It's This one's carbonated. I, I like carbonated water. So. This one was 94 cent. This one's <laughs> from uh, reverse osmosis. How many oh, okay. how many jugs of water do you think I've seen at the store in the last week there, Emily? How many how many gallon jugs do you think I've seen? True. Good point. Good point. I went to the swanky I'm uh, rich. I went to Clark's yeah, Nutrition, that's right. which is like a health food store today, and I couldn't believe how much stuff they were out of. They still had some of this on the shelf. There but you like go. uh you know, they didn't have toilet paper or anything there either. Even they didn't even have onions. I mean, like there's there's vegetable sections that are cleared out. Not that I go over there, but excuse me, my girlfriend, she's like, Oh, I was going to get some onions and throw it in with the pork roast. And there's no onions. I've never been to a store and not seen onions before. <laughs> so I think because people think it'll help them fight the infection. So probably people are. All right. 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 Probably onions, garlic, too, garlic, sure. garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Ginger. Yeah. Ginger. I, used yeah. To eat, I used to eat garlic. Um, whenever I was, I felt like I was starting to get a cold or something. I used to eat uh, cloves of garlic. Um, yeah. and it actually helped. It really improved. Yeah. Back then. Same. Yeah. I don't know, but, um, they say Shoot. that particularly there's a compound in garlic called, uh, Allison that, uh, is antimicrobial. Um, and I know, I know they use it to treat H pylori, which is that thing that gives you, uh, uh, acid reflux. 
Yeah, no, what's uh, the little um, holes you get? The uh, little abscesses you get from uh, 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 ulcers? Ulcers, yeah. So they yeah. use it to treat ulcers. But um, the thing is, is, you know, onions and even coconut oil is supposed to be antimicrobial, right? But the, you got to wonder, it's like, how do you know it's killing the right microbes? Right. That's right. That's right. Like, I can't. I can't take this Lysol and just. Kill my strip of <laughs> I know, right? Right. So I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a big difference between drinking Lysol and, and having some garlic or something. But I always wonder, and, and that's the other thing. I mean, I see people talking about probiotics all the time, and it's like, and are eating, you know, uh, fermented food, live cultures, and it's like, if your if your intestinal flora needs to be replenished constantly, there's got to be something going on. And maybe it's the garlic, the coconut oil, the onions, and everything else are killing off some of the bacteria that you need to, to digest. That's I a mean, good point. Yeah. Besides, if you eat a lot of garlic, please don't work out at the gym next to me because that's the worst. <laughs> I used to do that. <laughs> well, stay it away from me very far. <laughs> you don't want them to be drinking soda water then burp. Yeah. Did you have anyone here ever have a hot toddy? Uh, that is, drink? Isn't that like whiskey with like a, a cinnamon stick and tea or something? And lemon juice. Yeah. Lemon juice. Oh, okay. That's what me and my buddies would do whenever like one of us was sick. We'd be like, hot toddies! Like we just make mm -hmm. hot toddies so we could still get trashed and feel like we were going to get healthy. I don't know. It's really dumb. Um, but yes, <laughs> some, some homeopathic remedies. So if you got a headache, peppermint oil on your temples is really good for a headache um if you got so there, this isn't carnivore but you might have non-carnivore you know um listeners or viewers thanks for right. watching still you've made it this far yes thank um, you for watching <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know one fourth teaspoon of apple cider vinegar with a half cup of lemon juice and like a quarter cup of turmeric and um what else was in there Crap. a quarter cup of turmeric or know, like right? that's a, a lot of turmeric can we just agree it's called you mean a turmeric? quarter teaspoon turmeric i think it's quarter teaspoon you're right of turmeric. <laughs> i was gonna say there's no way that a much cup. <laughs> and a and a quarter quarter teaspoon of ginger and uh like half an onion you put it all together and you boil it with apple cider vinegar and lemon i i've done this and you drink that and it helped me when I used to do it. Oh, and if you have stuffy sinuses, like you feel like you have a sinus infection, tea tree oil. Tea tree oil, you boil mm -hmm. some water, you grab like a rag or something, and you put the tea tree oil in the boiling water, and you use the rag as like a way to steam it, and you do the oh, tea tree oil steam to it. steam the sinuses. Yeah. Interesting. So have you guys thought of a strategy in case you know you find it hard to get meat? Like, what are you what are you gonna do? I'm going to Tom's house. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> in and out. Um, I I'm it. I'm gonna definitely contact my local farmer. Um, she's like fourteen miles from me. Uh so I'm just gonna hope that she doesn't run out. But if she runs out then uh I'll probably go to my local butcher that 41 miles away um and just hope that i can find it because i gotta have the regenerative meat too now you know it's like a whole nother level of uh scarcity that's right i've got a freezer full downstairs uh plenty of meat should last me about uh me and the family i'm guessing about six months so about wow six months that's the uh, uh, well the way i eat uh if i i'll just have to fast a little more so you know no big deal i think i have enough for for 20 days that's really all that meat is you can only go 20 days with that that was a lot of meat uh yeah i eat um about a pound and a half a day of okay. total of um beef and beef fat and so I have 25 pounds of beef fat and about 20 pounds of beef. Okay. So we I, both, I had a chest freezer that we weren't using. Somebody gave it to me. We used it for a while for something else. And then 
it's just been sitting there. And so we actually plugged it in today because I went to Sam's Club six times to get toilet paper and didn't get it in uh, the first five. But every time I was there, they had another cut of meat. And so I bought some every time. They had bacon one day. It wasn't the one I normally li like, but I got it anyways. Next day, they had the kind I want. So I got some of that, you know, and I've been buying. They've had some roasts in there, which I normally don't buy the roast, but um, probably be cutting them into jerky. Probably get Justin to come over here, make some jerky, because he likes to eat jerky. He's like a jerky eating machine. Yeah, he would take an entire <laughs> steak that's been jerkied and just putting his hand in there, grabbing another like a machine. It's like, oh my God, did you ever, have you eaten for a week or what? Cause I mean, literally he could just keep putting jerky in his pie hole hour after hour. I can't, I, my jaw would be hurt. Not him. So, uh, so yeah, in, in, in winter, I try and make as much jerky as I can cause I run the dehydrator in the kitchen and it, that's tends to warm up the house. So uh, I don't want to be running the AC in the summer with the, with the dehydrator going. So I've been drying some meat. I don't know that I have that much really to, to go on. So I'm just going to keep going back. I'm still hoping to buy some Kleenex in the next couple of months. So I'm going to keep stopping by the store. And if I see some meat, I'll grab some meat. And if I see some Kleenex, I'll grab some Kleenex. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to keep throwing it now that i got an extra freezer going because I'm the only one right in my household that plans anything. So I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I got a strategy. It's all on you. I was like, we're going to need some toilet paper. And every you the other people in the household are not all that motivated to even go out and look for it. So I went, you know, like six days in a row till I got it. So. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, meat, I, they don't care. They eat cereal and all kinds of crap. And I just had a discussion yesterday with one of the kids about milk. He's, I'm like, dude, there's no milk at the store. Oh, but they have to provide milk. There'll be more milk. They have to restock. And I'm like, yeah, but at some point they run out of milk. No, but it's the law. They have to provide milk. It's the I'm law. Like, oh. it's the law. <laughs> I'm like, look, when the cow's empty, the cow's empty. All right? You can't just keep getting milk out of the cow. Everybody's hoarding it and buying more. No, but my grandma said they have to keep restocking the shelves. I'm like, yes, but if they've run out of things to stock the shelves with, they are empty. Would you like to go to the store with me? Yeah. Wow. Uh, but I did score six half gallons of organic whole milk for the for the wee ones today so they'll be nourished a bit longer with their <laughs> crappy cereal freaking i think you need to give him uh, a copy of uh, thomas sal's uh, basic economics just have him read that and he'll understand supply and demand and scarcity yes, yes. <laughs> there you go there you go yes. was it you tom that was saying that people have also gone mad over um eggs and milk over there there was absolutely no um, eggs left except uh, egg whites in the containers, you know, the liquid egg whites. Yeah. And the only milk left was the expensive organic milk, everything. And then like the almond milk, there was some almond milk there. Yeah. And uh, that was it. Everything else was wiped out today. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to the shopping center last night after work and, I mean, people have gotten all the sanitizer was gone. All the pasta sauce was gone. All the pasta was gone. Uh, all the um, most of the meat was gone. And toilet paper and and tissues completely gone. And you it's, said, didn't you say eggs too? No, no, they had they had eggs and milk. They had plenty of eggs and milk. Oh, that's right, that's right. Mm. That's interesting. But but my sister went to the local butcher, and he'd run out of meat. Mm. Wow. So I mean, at first I wasn't worried about it, and then I thought to myself, oh, okay, well, this this can be a bit of a problem if you start running out of meat. Um, and then I was thinking, well, I think if worse comes to worse, I'll just go to McDonald's and get some beef patties and yeah, just live off true. that. Or fast. Yeah. Yeah, we might be some ripped mothers before this thing is over. 
<laughs> five years from now, we're all going to be chiseled. Yeah, I dropped 150 pounds, but I am jerked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been. I mean, I buy like uh, pork sausage and stuff because like everybody else here likes to eat that too. You know, I eat a little bit of it. You know, and they had it in stock, so I've got two boxes in the freezer um, and a half of one in the fridge that's open. I got uh, hot dogs. They stay. Have, sometimes they have hot dogs, so I was like, oh, all beef wieners. Throw them in the cart because. We, you know, at the very least, I can feed them to everybody else. You know, like, right? That's right. That's right. All beef wieners, why not? But well, I yeah, spent I mean, a ton on groceries the last week because it's like just buy whatever was there. Usually, the expensive stuff. Sorry, Joe. Go. That's right. Um, yeah. So you know, my cats are pretty fattened up. They're age like twelve. And there you go. So, worst <laughs> comes the worst. Sorry, Taco. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we were talking about Wait. that with the neighbor. I don't know really so nice. lean there. <laughs> what? The neighbor You're was. Eat your cat? The, neighbor, <laughs> the neighbor's like, you still got one dog, and I said, yeah, you know, the cats are getting kind of scarce around here, and we were making jokes about making fancy coats out of the cats. And, you know, it's, it's like, uh, what was it down in uh, Puerto Rico? There, all the animals are disappearing off the streets. All this, you know, <laughs> things got. Or no, it was Venezuela. That's where Venezuela. it was. Venezuela. Yeah. yeah, there was all the cats and dogs are disappearing. It's like, it's dinner now. You know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, we might be there. In fact, I'm gonna stop shopping for toilet paper and Kleenex tomorrow and go buy some more arrows. <laughs> <Just in case. laughs> That's it. Well, the good thing is I've got a bunch of squirrels out back. I've got there a deer running around every now and then. I, I've got an AR. I've got I've got slingshots for the squirrels. I've got a fishing pond right outside. There's a river, so I can fish. So I, I'm good as far as if it comes to that. Got plenty of water. The whole thing. So we might be doing a Walking Dead caravan to Ray's house. There you go. <laughs> yeah, try, try try to get over here. We'll yeah. pick up Zumbo at LAX. <laughs> Me and Justin. We'll do our little convoy. Uh, we'll go yeah. get. I think Emily's closer than Ray. And we pick up Emily yeah, and then we go to Ray's. There you go. That's our final plan, the apocalypse plan. The apocalypse plan. That'll be plan. the that's right. The Ray's on the Ray uh Raymond Nays on uh protocol. That's it. We we are the chosen one. Maybe we need a <laughs> protocol sign or something. <laughs> hey, hey Justin, um, just to let you know, it is up to you to repopulate this planet. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Maybe you better not chrome those balls. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> uh, if it is Corona Chan's wish, she will provide the uh, <laughs> the means. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh um, so Tom, I actually did send you a link to an article about how increasing salt actually increases your immunity. I guess viruses and bacteria do not like sodium chloride. So if you increase Excellent. your salt intake, um, it will also help prevent and help you get over illness. And um, because I already do a lot of salt because of the migraines, mm -hmm. I'm already there. So I probably don't have to up, but um, yeah, I'm pretty salty. Well, when you get a, <laughs> when you get a sore throat, right? You get a, a, a you know strep throat or whatever, and you gargle with salt water. It seems to help. You know, maybe that salt that saline. Uh, rinsing is is actually lowering the bacteria count and the nasal the nasal rinses mm. uh -huh. you, saline. Here's, here's a question for you guys if just say you got this would you fast Ooh. Heck yeah, a heartbeat for me oh yeah good question for you guys that's a good idea fasting? would you that's fast a really good idea or take the load of stress off the body to sort of heal itself yeah maybe yeah that sounds totally. like a strategy dude well and, and i think i would i would kind of suss that out i'd be like oh, if i ate do i feel better or i feel worse if you feel worse then i would probably fast now the last time i i got sick i had a sore throat and i fasted and i i'd already learned to fast right it was very comfortable right. fasting and i to me that was like the obvious thing my throat is killing me I'm not going to swallow any food, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to work great. I was, uh, I was over it in a few days and 
got lots of Netflix in because they didn't have to go downstairs and cook and clean and all that crap. So I might fast. What do you think? I think Justin. Yeah, I think I would or go raw. Might go raw and fast, just like straight nutrients. I don't know. It depends on how sick I get. Like if I get so sick I can't move or whatever, or I just want to sleep, like it might just be like easier um, to just fast or just have some raw meat because it's nice and cool. You know, have one package of steak on me and another package like in me. I think <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pretty good to go. But yeah, well, I, mean, I, I think it's an awesome strategy though. M? Well, whenever I had the flu just a week or two ago, um, I mean, I, I've been eating raw anyway since January, but um, I noticed that my body was just like, almost a little bit more cravy for the, the raw meat. Like I, my body was just like, yes, like this is what we need. And so I was eating a lot, just raw meat. Can we put that on t-shirt, cravy for raw meat? Cravy, <laughs> cravy for raw meat. Cravy for raw meat, there you go. What about you, Ryan? But, oh, heck Emily. yeah. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Ray's always down for fasting. He's he's there. I live it, Mister Fasting. He yeah. likes fasting like I like studies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we both hate pants. You hate shoes too, Ray. As much as I actually, hate I do hate shoes. I probably hate <laughs> shoes more than you do. Maybe we were separated at birth. That's it. That's it. He yeah. likes fasting like I like fat. There you go. There you go. And Zumbo, I take it you would fast? Uh, uh, look, I think whenever, I, well, in the past, whenever I've had a, a high temperature, I seem to not want to eat. So I think it would just be something that I would do naturally. But then th there are days where I could be coming down with a bit of a head cold run down. And I find myself just wanting to eat, you know, three, four pounds of meat. Just throw it down. Mm. Um yeah, look, I think if, if I was to get it, I would experiment <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know, see, see what works. Like, I mean, oh, you guys, mean, you guys mean when you have the virus. Yeah. yeah, yeah we, welcome like, to the conversation, When and right? if. When and if. <laughs> okay. When and, when and if, okay. if you get it, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, would that be a strategy? Would that be a tool in, in the arsenal? Uh, to, like, I mean, starve it out. Starve it out. You well, did not, say to stress, tool. not to stress the body, just you know, let everything sort of. You did say a tool on his arsenal, quicker. right? I wasn't sure if I heard that right. What? <laughs> not asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we said. Tool in the arsenal. Arsenal. Because I was like, what? <laughs> Is that really? That's what no he freak, meant. No uh, freak. No freak. <laughs> <laughs> Why does every conversation go back to Frank? <laughs> there's I know, so right? many applications there's so oh many applications God. how did frank to frank become the whipping boy frank to frank uh, wait that's not a mystery is it oh. uh, 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 actually i just got a note i just got a notification now that um they've canceled one of my my son's got picnic in the playground it's a thing they do on a saturday night and all the families get together and they got some stalls mm. and that's been canceled due to the mm. coronavirus yeah, there's events canceled all over the place here. Um, college is canceled, um, all sorts of stuff. I'm sure they'll cancel school after this next week of spring break. Well, and I, sure. here, they're pl here they're playing sport in front of or in, inside empty stadiums. I, I think I read yesterday that the UFC was, well, was uh, in Brazil and they were fighting in an empty arena. Yes, so, uh, I heard about yeah. the uh, sumo wrestling in uh, uh, the, for the Olympics that they did it in an empty arena and they filmed it as, you know, th they didn't want anybody to be there. Wow. Mm -hmm. the Olympics so, is going crazy. On. Yeah, I guess for the <laughs> sumo wrestling. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true. Could that a sumo wrestler go carnivore? Sorry, I know random. That's a conversation for another. It's actually a great question. And I read up on the sumo wrestler's diet. It's a very interesting diet. I mean, wow, they really starch up. No, 
it wouldn't be possible. They couldn't. Yeah, the, I don't think they could maintain as much uh, subcutaneous fat that way, which is There's where no most way. of their fat is. They they have remarkably small amounts of uh, visceral fat typically, which is you know their their diet's been honed over you know hundreds yeah. of years to be make these super powerful people so they're really large. So they'd be able to fast right? very well. It's very well studied, by the way. These these Japanese really studied how to get the biggest and most muscular people. So they take it very seriously. Yep. All right, guys. Well, was there anything else you guys want to cover? Should we wrap it up, or do we have any more Frank Tufano jokes? Or no. no I just more. wanted to say, I just wanted to say, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones. If you've been carnivore for a while and you notice you don't get sick and you have elderly people like in your building or family members, offer to go to the store for them, you know, offer to help out because we, um, you know, we want to make this paradigm shift. And that's right. there's people that are like, hey, what, that dude that's carnivore, like you totally helped me out or that chick that's carnivore, she was so helpful. She wasn't scared of going out. She went and got groceries when I was too scared, especially the elderly. I mean, there's probably many elderly that are just, too ashamed and too scared to go out and get whatever they need. So, I don't know, that would be a big point. You know, let's help each other out. Let's have a healthy, healthy hand. Now's not the time to turn on each other. Whether you're vegan, whether you're carnivore, in between, let's all help each other get through this. Justin's <laughs> right. This yeah. is a big shift. I was going to say, and also don't, don't, don't play with, you know, I mean, if, if you get sick and, you know, don't think, oh, I'm just going to start eating meat. Do get medical advice as well. Do get yourself tested. Don't sure. don't just think that you're invincible, being carnivore or that you know by eating meat all of a sudden you're gonna, you know. Yeah, get plenty of rest. Don't get run down, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Good time to quit smoking if you smoke. That's right. Yeah. Stop eating so much sugar and processed foods. Maybe uh, maybe start start getting some exercise. Do whatever you can. Take care of your lungs, obviously. That's You're right. going to need them if you get the coronavirus. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of viruses could turn into pneumonia, you know. So um, you get pneumonia, that's so what the way that finishes off a lot of people in the hospital. They get down, get run down with something or they have surgery and they don't bounce back and they wind up with pneumonia and bam, it's bye-bye. So. Actually, here's one for you. I don't know if you guys have been following the, the, the or been looking up the news in Italy apparently they're not treating anyone over the age of 65. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah yep. I heard about that. So they're yep. kind of having a death panel. It's like, you know, yep. it's not, so if you've got it, it it's good luck. Saving. Yeah. That's it. You're on your own. Wow. That's rough. That, well, they, they can't, they don't have enough. I mean, the hospitals are, are, are jam packed. They don't have enough resources that they're, they're really struggling over there. Oh, it's so sad. But, so all the medication, and those are the ones who really need it. That's the worst part. Well, Italy has a very, you know, has an aging population. Right. So, and I, I was watching this YouTube clip and this gentleman had the paper from Brescia, which is up north, uh, Lombardia region. And there was two pages of deaths, death notices. A couple of days later, it's 10 pages. Same same newspaper, Whoa. couple of, yeah, and that is that is the worst hit um, area in Italy. Whoa! Can we blame it on pasta? Oh, <laughs> and bread, and yeah. bread. bread, bread sticks, right. That's right. Pizza. Well, I mean, I mean, mm. the Italians eat a lot of. I mean, they love their sweets. They love their yeah. pasta. They, they love they you know. Do. They do. They yes. love their bread. Yes. They love their wine. They love their you know their their, their cured meats. Yes. Wow. They love their fruit, you know. That's right. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm. But they love That's their cool. grandma. Yep. Like, come on. So do. I love grandma more than I love bread. Yep. Grandma. What? Like the the older people. Like. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Family. All right. I'm just saying, like, that's sad to, to yeah, be like, oh, rough. sorry, sorry, Grandma, mm -hmm. you're over 65. You're not getting care. Any you're not getting any care. Yeah. yeah. E even though you're the one who needs it the most. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, there was, when was it last? Not this. Well, here, here it's Monday. So last Monday it was actually the Sunday night. I'm speaking to my boss, and the deaths were like 165 in Italy. Get up in the morning, it's at 600, just like that. Bang! Wow. You know, it's just it's crazy at the moment. But it all seems to be up north. So I've spoken to some family in Sicily, where we're from, and like the the more, more southern part of Italy and everyone seems to be okay up north. It's a mess. It, it huh. really, it's, it's a mess. Hmm. Spain's in lockdown as well. Mm-hmm. Spain. I haven't yeah, heard that. Spain's in, yeah. Spain's in lockdown. Oh, there's word that we're going to be in lockdown after probably in a week also actual lockdown where restaurants are not allowed to open and stuff like that. I yeah. We're, that we're gearing we're gearing for that here. My, I spoke to my oh, boss and said, this, yeah, I said, look, what's your strategy? And um, we had a good chat about it. So if we have to lock down, we will, we will open for delivery and takeaway or maybe not takeaway, but delivery only. So, I mean, you can wear a mask or if you've got a third party, you know, like delivery or Uber that come in and they'll deliver it for us. I might have a friend who works for a large uh, government uh, government uh, agency region in Southern okay. California, and uh, he may <laughs> have told me that they were told uh, Thursday or Friday to figure out how to run the government from home. So, what? Wow. Yeah, work it out because they didn't. They don't really have a system for doing it, you know. But that's like, right. That's right. Uh, here, I, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but the uh, county recorder's office often uh, people get married at the recorder's office where they record the marriage certificates. They actually have little chapels, and you can make an appointment and get married by a government official there. And somebody at one of those. Uh, wedding parties was exposed and then Oof. some employees started getting sick um, everybody you know last I heard was kind of low risk they don't know whether it was seasonal flu, flu that the employees got or coronavirus or whatever so I, I don't know the latest on that but that's basically what happened was there was a chain of events and a lot of people were sick now somebody there had had the regular seasonal flu and was very ill for a while and it was not coronavirus so it could just be the seasonal flu going around but somebody affiliated with one of those ceremonies did indeed have coronavirus wow run the government from home probably say it was a lot of money anyways just saying. i was speaking to a friend of mine who's a policeman and i asked him like what do you guys do she says, oh, man, well, I mean, if we've got to make an arrest, you, know, you can't just say, listen, let me just ask them if they've got coronavirus and so, hang on, just wait there. I'm just going to put my gloves on while I'm, you know, and just put your hands behind your back while I'm doing it. So you got to feel sorry for those people that, you know, emergency service, people that have to deal with it and they've got no choice. I mean, running the government, yeah, you can do it from home, but you can't arrest criminals from home. Or you know? be a nurse. Yeah. The nurses well, have to walk right into the front lines and take yeah, care of right. it. Yeah, but they've, got, but they've got time to suit up for it, put gloves on and do everything. True. Well, the, true. the medical know, if, staff if you, in China has been decimated by coronavirus already. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't be surprised if they're having that problem in Italy as well. So it's very, very contagious. Sure. That's the problem. So, uh, you know, because people are so apparently could be contagious four or five days before they feel any symptoms. So, do you guys believe it comes from bat suit? It's a bit bit controversial here. Comes from what? From animals, or do you think it's man made? Or I do. Just, it's, it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it does already exist in nature. It, it's already documented back in the '60s, and there are certain animals that uh, that are known to carry it. You know, so um, just like, uh, you know, swine flu, bird flu, you know, there's there's certain paths that these uh, these viruses take through, you know, when they're jumping from species to species. And I, I look and there's documentation of this from the 60s already. So could somebody harvest that virus and then, you know, let it out and 
contaminated population, of course. But um, I don't. I I'm I I'm not I'm never, not saying never. I'm not saying there are no conspiracy theories. I'm leaning towards this is a natural event. Maybe uh maybe it was leaked out of a laboratory or something or. Whatever. That's nothing natural about that, is there? Mm -hmm. Well, not if not if somebody did that. No, but you know the whole thing too. People order these samples of um like you can get the really dangerous uh uh samples and they've been exposed to gamma radiation they're supposedly already dead but then they get them they're like five percent of this is still alive you know because the, the radiation didn't kill the entire sample and so then they've got a live sample that they shouldn't have you know mm. this has been in the news in the past so i mean two two things i've heard is one it's been man-made to reset the economy mm -hmm. And the other one I heard was it's been man-made to correct the world's population. And, and, this, I heard, and this, well, possibly, but th this is what I heard sure. back in, uh, was it, when was my friend here for the barbecue from the America? He was here in January, late January. So that was his theory. And, and when you think about it, correct the world population, well, it seems to be, I mean, the majority of people getting it are elderly. So, That's right. That's right. And I would correct it like they want. Well, yeah, it's, just, look, it's just conspiracy. Who, who knows? Will we ever know the truth? Of course not. That would never be known. But it is coincidental that Agenda 21, that's for 2021. That's right next year. So that's quite a coincidence. And I mean, I, it's an election, you know, and there's, it's just, an election, there's yes. so many, so many variables. Yeah. So again, these, these guys are playing 3D chess. Meanwhile, we're just looking at the 2D level. So, you know, they're well ahead of us. They, they I mean, uh, the, I call them the archons, uh, the, the, the people who uh, architect this whole thing. Uh, they're way above our levels. They got really super smart people working on this stuff. So even, even if we think we figured it out, we didn't. We just may have figured out a little bit of a level bar later. So. But I like just, I like that you guys are open minded enough to think that way. Yeah, and J Justin, what what do you think? Because I know we had a conversation about this the other day on the phone. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's uh, depends on who you listen to, you know, and um, I I think it's man made. I think it was, you know, we have these bio labs all over. We have like twelve bio labs here in the United States. The uh, virus originated in Wuhan. There was a Wuhan bio lab. They were working with stuff, you know, I don't know. It's hard to say accident on purpose. We don't know. We're probably not going to know. Um, I think it's just better just to focus on how do, how do we keep people safe, you know, and how do we, how do we stop the spread? And it's probably going to be, so, so it's going to be endemic. So we're going to be dealing with coronavirus for probably oh, the next, it. yeah, for the Whatever. next five, five years, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. until, until everyone is exposed or the vaccine, depending on your opinions about that. But um, either way, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty stuck with it. And so, um, well, luckily here where we are in the States, we're moving from winter and into spring and summer. Uh, you know, people are going to get more vitamin D, usually get out more, et cetera. And, you know, their mood, their stress, you know, goes down. So, you know, we're in we're at the tail end of flu season right now for where we're at in the United States. But so Australia kind of, is the opposite, right? The way we're going into it, yeah. Yeah. Right. So what happens in Australia will be very interesting because watching Australia go through its flu season in winter will kind of give us a little bit of what could possibly happen next winter, next winter over here in the United States. Because that's dun, when we dun, really need dun. to worry when we really need to worry is going to be next winter, not That's now. Right. I, and I kind of see it being kind of like a wave. It seems to come in waves, hit really hard and then disappear for a minute and then hit really hard and then disappear for a minute, which is really right. interesting because that seems to be the way it actually hits people. So, yeah. Well, and what I really like about it is that we can do something different than what everybody else is doing. Everybody else is on the standard American diet. And so the architects are planning on that. And yeah. so if we're just eating meat, then we can be above the, the game plan for the majority. Yeah. And also our mindset should be different. So as much as our diet is different, our mindset should be different too. 
you know, True. the non-panic, the willing to help out uh, others who are who are truly needing the help. Uh, you know, and hopefully we can actually convince folks to uh, at least get off the process crap and the sugars that weaken their immune system enough to be able to kill them. If they're not weakened enough, then uh, it's it, 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 the virus won't have a chance to kill them as easily. No, they'll be so much stronger. I mean, didn't you That's have right. asthma, Tom, before? Well, I did have asthma. I just, I didn't have very good uh, lung capacity. It seemed like when I did, you know, aerobic stuff, you know, running or whatever, I just, I just didn't have enough lung capacity to, to keep up. So could you, you can improve that. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, for sure. And asthma, there are a lot of people in my family had asthma. So including my mom. So yeah. And that, that directly contributed to her passing. So there you go. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of the way, I mean, I hear a lot of uh, folks who are, um, I mean, it's not uncommon for the 60 plus to have respiratory issues and that's what they end mm -hmm. up passing from. Yep. Yeah. yeah. She went, she was like 48 hours from like, you know, I'm having a little trouble breathing to gone. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Breathing is very important. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and I, you know, let me just throw this out there real quick. Almost every time we get in these conversations, people talk about the symptoms that went away. Acid reflux is one of the, you know, like heartburn and stuff is one of the first things that people say went away. Yeah. That is probably what killed my mom because she had cancer for 25 years. She fought breast cancer that metastasized. But what killed her was she would get GERD or acid reflux. She's sleeping. She'd aspirate the stomach contents that led to damaging her lungs, which caused the, the asthma. Oh they put her on the uh, acid reduce the proton pump okay. inhibitors and stuff like that. And the asthma medication. But when you go on those uh, acid blockers, you're much more likely to get pneumonia. So now you take a person who's got cancer and had chemo and radiation and hormone therapy and everything else. You put them on a medication that to, to stop the GERD or whatever that's more likely to give them pneumonia or let them get pneumonia. And on top of that, they ha now have asthma from damaging their lungs with GERD. And uh, so in, she was, you know, 70, let's say when she passed. And uh, so she got a little bit of an infection or whatever, and boom, it killed her. Like, like f you couldn't believe how fast it killed her, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I like to tell that story. And I, you know, Bart flips out when he finds out that you can buy a lot of those acid blockers right off the shelf here without a prescription. Cause it says right there in the literature, you shouldn't take them for more than 28 days. And it says right in there, it says you're like 17 times more likely to get pneumonia while you're taking them. And people stay on them for years. Wow. So, yeah. 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 No, I, I know people that do it constantly. That might be a good thing just to, to make people aware is have them look at what they're taking for, you know, acid reflux or GERD or Medication. whatever, mm -hmm. and look into it and see how likely it is to make them um, to get pneumonia because you get pneumonia and coronavirus or you get coronavirus and get pneumonia. Goodbye, right? Yeah. Well, and asthma, just like uh, Emily's saying, you got asthma. I mean, that's a high chance that you'll have or be able to get pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Hey, not only that. That's right. Not only that, guys, I mean, if we had a zombie apocalypse and we had to run away from zombies, I like being a carnivore mm -hmm. that I can do that. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, but you're Heavy right there at Zombie all. Central, right? Down there. That's right, CDC. That's well, why I got to mention it. They filmed The Walking Dead down the street from you and the CDC's yeah. around the corner. Sure is. It's like you 30 minutes head, away from my house. You might want to head west, buddy. <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute in walking dead they were all trying to head in to see what was going on of course then they went out but, you know. yeah yeah we should learn from that i know right <laughs> yeah yeah well I'm it looks tired. like we're keeping emily awake so we better wrap this up but did you guys want to mention meat mosaic real quick meat mosaic meat mosaic on instagram at meat mosaic so you'll find all of us and you we all post there you don't know which one of us will be posting but you can guess um and yeah so that's where you can find all five of us in one place 
we all have our own personalities. We are all separate segments, but yet when we come together, we have yeah, we magic. All, we all bring something different to the table. And, uh, we, you know, some people coach, some people cook, some people, uh, you know, do a lot of uh, YouTube videos. So, you know. <laughs> some people wear collars. <laughs> yeah. Some some people uh, wear body armor when they go out shopping for toilet paper. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. uh, some right. like it raw. Some like it raw. <laughs> and we don't stink, so you won't smell us coming. We don't stink. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody out there, thank you for watching. I hope you got you enjoyed this. So I hope that you got something out of it that's that's helpful. Maybe you could send a link to the video to somebody out there who uh, will benefit from this and uh, leave us your comments and uh, let us know what you think about the coronavirus. Leave us comments. Let us know how long it's been since you've been sick, since you've been on the carnivore diet and uh, maybe how many cavities you got, how well you're sleeping and all the other stuff. And if you've got to take acid blockers and all that good stuff, because we want to know, we care about our fans. And uh, so anyway, subscribe, like, pass it on, help the channel grow, help the word get out that carnivore might, just help you with a few maladies might just improve your quality of life but until next time everybody out there feel better